Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are talking about Tier 6 yet again, a tier that you should definitely be playing a lot more of right now. Now, I did a video talking about this quite a few months ago, and I said that Tier 6 was the new golden tier of the game, because matchmaking changed quite some time ago. Essentially, well, a lot of minutia changed, but TLDR... Tier 7 gets double up tiered way more now, leaving Tier 6 the tier that is top tier more often. Meaning that, of course, you're fighting higher tier ships much less often at Tier 6. Tier 7 used to be like that back in the day, and Tier 7 has some fantastic ships, both tech line and premium ships, but unfortunately, they really don't up tier that well to Tier 9. Uh, you've heard me say this before, Tier 8 up tier is a lot better to Tier 10 than, than Tier 7 does to Tier 9, with a lot of the thresholds there in terms of armor and gun caliber. But, with Tier 7 being in that situation, Tier 6 is definitely the place you want to be playing now. And this go-round, we've got a bit of an accidental match that we're going to go through today. One that is incredibly just... It shows why this tier is so much better, um, with some typical World War ships teams too. Um, so anyway, this match I am sailing in the Mutsu, the Tier 6 Japanese Premium Battleship. The Mutsu is a <laughs> fantastic, to say the least, ship right now, especially in the current season of Brawls. So she has 8 16-inch guns at Tier 6, which means that... You don't really care much about any armor when you're at Tier 6. They are gimped a little bit because she uses a World War I era shell rather than the World War II shell that the other Japanese 16-inch battleships use. Meaning that from close range, her pin's pretty darn good, but from longer range, it's quite bad. And of course, she has that good old Japanese battleship dispersion. Meaning that you get some pretty darn wonky salvos out of this ship as well. And this is one of the Japanese secondary battleships, one of the few that, and well, she's actually one of the few secondary ships that won in the secondary rework. Well, the commander rework, not the upcoming secondary rework, but her secondaries picked up a net gain in terms of accuracy. Everything from tier 6 down did. So her secondaries are actually better than before. They picked up a little bit of range and accuracy. And she's built for that right now because... I was supposed to be playing Brawls at this moment. However, I unintentionally forgot to change the game mode from random battles to Brawls. So now I'm in a random battles match with a secondary build Mutsu with Ocean Unconquerable, a member of TSOF, who is in the Ark Royal and who actually failed to load in at this moment. He, he's coming, but um, oh, there he is. His, his, his Swordfish just got launched. So we were going to go do some silly things in brawls, but we wound up doing some very serious things in random battles. Now the Ark Royal is an interesting carrier. Because oh, there goes our Elvis ship. Um, the Ark Royal is an interesting car carrier because she is a tier six carrier with tier four planes. Uh, as many of you know, she is equipped with her very famous swordfish biplanes. The swordfish that took out the Bismarck's rudder, and if you listen, you can hear them slowly approaching from my left right now, and they're still approaching because they these things are ungodly slow. So the swordfish is a tier, there they go is a tier four aircraft, and well tier six CVs get up to to tier eight, and well that quite frankly sucks. So how does a tier four plane work when it gets up to? Oh look at that actual good dispersion from Mutsu though. Let's admire that for a second. There we go, twelve thousand damage off of that Iron Duke right there. Um, anyway. So how, how do Tier 4 planes work at Tier 6 when they get up to, to Tier 8? Well, in order to make the Swordfish work, um, the Ark World simply doesn't run out of them. Its region rate is simply amazing. I believe it's around 60 seconds. And given how fast the Ark Royals, or how slow the Ark Royals Swordfish are, uh, you've probably made more Swordfish than the ones that you've lost just on the journey to get to your target. It's pretty darn good. Uh, and of course, I mean, you can't really have the Ark Royal in this game without having her Swordfish. That's what she's known for. So anyway, so we got an Ark Royal and a Mutsu here on two brothers of all matches, too. And this is a Tier 6 game, so Ocean and I are top tier, so we've got that going for us. And right now, I'm just kind of keeping 
holding my distance and using those 16 inch guns to my advantage. Again, at longer range, of course, the pins aren't really there. Uh, but when you're shooting something like an Iron Duke, with a, which is a British dreadnought, it's nice and chunky, so you can still definitely make do. Uh, Mutsu also doesn't have the best AA at all. I mean, the Japanese battleships definitely not known that known for that, except for, of course, the uh, Shikishima. But right now, of course, we are down. Oh, it's a double CV game too. If you ah, oh, there goes those swordfish. And believe it or not, uh, Ocean's got his uh his throttle down. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> they're they're so slow. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, double CV game too. We have a ranger and Ocean and the Ark Royal. Enemy team has two rangers. So New Mexico is also slowly, slowly working his way over the eastern side of the map. Um, I somehow managed to underestimate his speed, which is um, surprising because it's, uh, it's New Mexico. But again, big chunky targets like that don't really matter to the lesser pins of the guns, just because, again, how chunky these Dreadnought-era battleships are. Oh, and we just lost our Jervis and our Algerie, too, so we're down one DD and two cruisers at this point. Uh, enemy team's not down anything. They did capture the decap, but thankfully our Fubuki is there capturing that for us. There's the enemy ranger, but he's out of my range, and my spotter plane is down at the moment. Oh, I do have Yamamoto on this ship as well, so he can activate his talents if I do manage to get a crack in this round. Here's the New Mexico again, slowly making his way over there, showing me complete broadside. Now, New Mexico is a pretty fearsome battleship because she has 12 14-inch guns. But when you sell broadside in New Mexico, it doesn't really work out for you all that well. Because, again, it's a huge, chunky target. And thankfully, the Omaha manages to finish him off. And man, I got him down to 360 health there. RNG was not on my side this match. And that's a recurring theme. So, we are down... I'm sorry, the enemy team's down one ship. We are now down four ships. We lost one of our battleships since we last checked in on that. Enemy team captured the was capturing the A cap and managed to push our Fubuki out of the D cap. Hard for DDs to do anything in a double CV game, even when it's low tier CVs like this. Now Ocean's going over there to punish that Monticello for island camping via Swordfish level bombers. The Swordfish too, they drop a lot of bombs, like an an, an incoherent amount of bombs too, as do most of the British CVs. So it's great for any ship that's island camping or just sitting. Bow in, you just absolutely melt their debt with the amount of bombs and fires you start. And here's a Belfast who's very brave and popped out from around an island from seven kilometers away. Fortunately, I do, of course, overpin him. 16 inch guns against the light armor of the Belfast. That's going to pretty much be the result, unless you can manage to grab him when he's angled. Here comes Emi Ranger coming in on the Mutsu. Oh, also, too, I forgot to mention the Mutsu does have torpedoes. She has four. Not four sets of launchers. Four torpedoes. She has two single launchers on either side that reload in 20 seconds. So she can reload her torpedoes before she reloads her guns. And many a player forgets that the Mutsu has torpedoes. Ooh, I get a bounce on the Belfast with 16 inch guns. Ah, woe is my RNG, woe is me. So this Ranger is still attacking me, by the way. This is, I believe, his fourth run on me. Um, showing off the awesome AA of the of the uh, Mutsu there by shooting down one of his planes. And thankfully the Mutsu does have decent torpedo protection for its tail, although it doesn't have the amazing torpedo protection of the Yamato. Ooh, there we go, Citadel there on the Belfast. So I know for a fact Belfast is hurting right now, and now we managed to pick up the D-cap. We are still down two, two cruisers, one DD, and one battleship. So the Belfast has smoked up and is now HE spamming me doing things that Belfast does. Now, I'm unspotted right now. However, this is of course a double CV game. And the Ranger just managed to get all four of his torpedo bombers off on me. And I don't think he really forgot that I'm out here. But thankfully, apparently he did. He's trying to go after the Koenig that's surrounded by a Fabuki and a Zara rather than myself who's out here all by my lonesome. And the Madani takes out our Konigsberg, so now we're down three cruisers. Battleship and uh, DD to the enemy teams. Oh, we managed to just grab an enemy uh, DD there. So the Belfast has me radared now and is burning me nicely. I, of course, am holding my damage con because the one of the rangers could come by, either um, dive bomb me, set a fire on my deck, or torpedo bomb me and set a flood, so I'm just holding. Plus, I'm above half health and I still have four heals left, and it's just a single... Belfast. 
and I'm hoping to, to just slowly creep into his uh, smoke firing penalty here. And he, I believe he just managed to stop firing. Yep. But then he fires again, revealing himself at an amazing 1800 health. Get the first two guns out. Managed to get the kill in the Belfast there. Pop my heel. Thankfully that last salvo did not start any more fires. So um, that's my, well, <laughs> first kill of the game. And we also managed to grab up their Bedundi as well with Ocean securing that kill. So let's take a look at the map. Well, um, in the time it took me to charge the Belfast, our Ranger and Ark Royal are now being pushed by Helena and an Emil Bertin. Um, we've lost three of the four caps. And we managed to take the one decap though from them, so we got that. We're about 300 points over 300 points. Now we're over 300 points behind the enemy team. Because there goes our Koenig. So yeah, it's all, all is not well for our team right now. And since I was very much like a very good chance of winning at this match, I slow down, get my rear turrets to bear on the Helena, and begin to target him because he has the biggest threat right now. Well, he's posing the biggest threat, proper English there, to our CVs. The ML Barton's almost done. Ocean's focusing him right now with his rocket planes, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers. But this Helena is pretty high health and it is, of course, an American cruiser, which means it has very good AA. Even though the Ark Royal can, of course, print planes like nobody's business, from this close range when, when Ocean's attacking the Helena probably within uh, every two minutes, He's definitely going to run out of planes if he keeps throwing them at the Helena. So I'm focusing him down right now uh, with the Monticello approaching me from the front. However, the Monticello is an Italian cruiser and does not have... Ooh, very nice good clump of shells right there, but I only managed to knock out a turret and get one pin on him. Um, the Monticello does not have HE, so he can't set me on a fire or anything. So from a bow tank position right here, he does not pose much of a threat to me. Ocean manages to secure the Emil Batin with the Arc Royal level bombers, and I'm still maintaining a fire on the Helena. However, my friend in the... Oh, there goes our Omaha, though. Um, my friend in the Ranger is back, this time targeting the low health Zara in front of me. He's also being targeted by the Iron Duke. I'm keeping my bow pointing toward the Monticello as well, because he does have those Italian torpedoes. Long range, very slow torpedoes. I very much like to not eat them. Helena now being focused down by, well, just Ocean. No, our, our Ranger still at this point, my bad. Being focused down by um, Ocean and our Ranger. Just as we're about to secure the kill on the Helena, unfortunately, the Helena gets our Zara. So it's now down to the, fu the Fubuki, myself, Ocean, and our Ranger. And there goes the Helena. Ocean manages to secure the kill on him with his. Swordfish Torpedo Bombers. Alright, so now I've got an Iron Duke in front of me and a Monticello to my right. And if you don't notice yet, or haven't noticed yet, again, proper English, uh, the turret rotation on the Mutsu is very much not good. Not good at all. The Japanese had something against WD-40. So right here, I know for a fact this man is wa launching torpedoes. He should be throwing AP into my side right now like it's nobody's business or sap into my superstructure, but he's not. He's 100% launching torpedoes. So I get my front two turrets out on him, turning myself toward him, exposing my broadside to the Iron Duke, but again, it's what, what do I do? And I get screwed over by RNG yet again. Thankfully, the uh, Iron Duke has worse RNG than me. I turn back toward the Iron Duke, hoping that I've turned enough or maneuvered enough to throw off the Monticello's torch. Remember, they are very slow torps, so if you just maneuver a little bit, it should throw them off by a f f wide margin. Monticello turns around, managed to thread the freaking needle there between those Ranger torps. And, oh, God, <laughs> two overpins with the Monticello down to 98 health. Manages to nick him there at the end for my second kill of the match. Um, the enemy Jervis is now rushing our Ranger while I'm being targeted by the enemy Ranger right now. And I believe that was a couple of the Monticello's Torps too. Unfortunately, I did eat those. That's my Discord, not yours. Ranger coming in yet again. Unfortunately, my uh, I fumbled the... That's still my Discord, not yours. I fumbled my party sector. But thankfully managed to just pull off the maneuver there to throw off those torpedoes. And shoot down one of the Ranger's planes in the process. So, the Jervis is now absolutely bum-rushing our Ranger. And considering how low health the Jervis was, I'm actually quite surprised that he lasted for as long as he as he has. I mean, because it is a Ranger, but, like, the man's right next to him. The one secondary gun of the Ranger should have taken him out, but alas, he does not. Ranger takes out... I'm sorry, Jervis takes out the Ranger, and Ocean manages to secure the kill on the Jervis. 
leaving myself, Ocean, and our hero, Fubuki, to fight off the rest of the enemy team. So it's three versus four right now. And look what I found, the enemy ranger. But for some reason, my shells are not allowed to connect on the Iron Duke from nine kilometers. Oh, boy. Thankfully, they finally connect, and I just needed one pin to finish the man off. And there he goes for kill number three for me. And the ranger, he really likes me at this point. <laughs> it, 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 but since it's a ranger, he's whoo, getting very close to killing me right now. But he's also right there in front of me. And look at what I found. Apparently, the enemy's Congo, the tier 5 Japanese battleship, has been AFK this entire time. So right now, all we have to do is sink the two rangers. And speak of the other ranger, look where the man is. He's in the sea cap in a ranger <laughs> just a few kilometers from ocean so that ranger's attention is now fully on ocean this ranger's attention is fully on me for very good reasons and it's a ranger they tend to blow up when you shoot them they're kind of like the uh pensacola of cvs and sure enough there we go okay so that ranger's down so all i have to do right now is sink this Congo. I'm in the cap. I'm contesting it. We sink this Congo. Ocean sinks that Ranger over there. We win the match. They are very close to winning now, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Right now, my turrets are rotating as fast as they can to try and get on this Congo. Again, he, the man's AFK. Not moving. Should be an easy kill here in the Mutsu with the 16-inch guns. Eat some rocket planes there from that Ranger. Get a couple of pins on him out of my front turrets. Ocean is currently absolutely in a death duel with this ranger. Uh, Arc Rail does have more secondaries than a ranger, and I'm pretty sure he's putting them to use right now. Very entertaining battle on the H-line there on the mini-map. Um, <laughs> and again, this this ranger up north is still just trying to knock me out of the match. Thankfully, my damage con is off of cooldown now, so I will have that if he manages to start a fire, but I believe he just... No, he still has more planes. Man still has planes. Jeez. Here they come yet again. Old Kyoto on the deck with his Nambu pistols doing what he can to try and stop him. One plane. Can't shoot down one plane. Broadside Congo. Very weakly armored ship because it is a battle cruise. A very fast battleship, by the way. Tier 5 battleship. Totally capable of going 30 plus knots. Um, Ocean's level bombing the Ranger right now. And um, Ranger's not that well armored, but I do believe he does get a couple bounces. Nope, I actually pinned the crap out of him. Uh, Ranger down to 14,000 health. However... It is over. <laughs> what a match. So Ocean and myself wind up with four kills each. So we sunk ten ships on the enemy team. All but the AFK Congo and the Ranger there at the end. Ocean and I sunk eight of them. And I would very much like to argue that I pretty much sunk that New Mexico too. So we kind of sunk nine of them. But wasn't enough. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? It was some of the most fun we've had in this game in quite some time. I wish I was recording the live audio. It was just an absolute giggle fest of how hilarious that match was. The frustrating RNG, the the, the Ranger coming down to the southern half of the map. Normally the CVs, they, they, they don't like going past the A or J line depending upon where they spawn at. But the man's in the D cap with his Ranger. Uh, I'm sorry, the C cap with his Ranger. Um, but an absolute blast of a match, and something can really only happen at tier 6. I mean, when was the last time you saw a high tier CV move his CV that far into the enemy territory? Or just have something of this hilarity happen? And again, we lost. We lost a very valiant struggle, but it was fun. I had fun. Ocean had fun. That one guy calling us smooth brains, he didn't have fun. But, I mean, it was a darn good match, and we, we tried to do our best, and it, it it was just fun. And that's what this game's supposed to be, fun. So if you haven't dropped on down to Tier 6 yet, do it it's for your mental health, and just for the sake of having some fun in this game, and kind of remembering why we play this game for some good old fun, and just chuckle-filled laughs like this. Anyway, guys, let me know you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on the way to 30,000 subs. Just passed 27,500 a few days ago, which is awesome. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Wednesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.